With Sea of Thieves' 2024 showcase coming up on their sixth anniversary, it's got me thinking about how Rare might be returning to a more traditional style of updates even in their seasons. While well, seasons and their boring names are here to stay, the content looks to be taking a 180, and that's super exciting. So we know Rare shifted focus back to sandbox updates for the rest of the year as confirmed several times. What does that vague statement mean? Well, we've had a series of systems updates from Season 9, 10, and what would have been Season 12, all in preparation for the PS5 port. And probably the Switch 2 port, let's just face that. But now that's in the rearview mirror, we're getting actual content again. While Season 9 kinda refreshed the sandbox, what Rare really means is less harpoon changes and more things to actually do. See, updates for this game can be really put into three categories. Firstly is quality of life updates. Examples would be Season 5, Season 9, and Lost Treasures. Think harpoon changes, tall checkpoints, and storage crate changes. These don't change the way you play, just make the sessions less frustrating, more seamless, or even just remove restrictions for all or certain players. We have system changes such as Season 11, Season 8, and Season 7, where a new system is added to the game that enables certain playstyles, adds new progression or ways to engage in already existing content. There is some crossover with the sandbox like Emissaries or the Hourglass, but these are usually due to accompanying features, not technically the main ones. Last and definitely not least are the majority of updates and these are sandbox updates. Basically, you wake up, you install the patch and there's a new thing to do that wasn't there the day before. This could be tall tales, new toys like Mega Kegs or something like Sea Forts. With Rare shifting back to this approach, for me, it feels like we're looping back to what I'd call the golden age of Sea of Thieves from 2018 to September 2020. And yes, Grandpa Ray is talking about the good old days again. Get with it. To be clear, Sea of Thieves in terms of content is in its best place it's been. Servers and bugs are a different story, but the way the game felt as a live service back then was awesome. Each of those three years had different methods of content delivery that made them unique, but almost every update felt like it was adding new stuff. Part of that was clearly because the game needed it and had less to do, so new content felt like it was massive even if the content was relatively small. A great example of this was a golden run from March 2020 to September 2020. In the space of six updates we got a new tall tale, a new pirate legend voyage, two new tools, two world events, tall tale checkpoints, a new gold hoarder voyage, and a new instrument with accompanying shanties. That was crazy and the only dip was lost treasures in May 2020 and to be fair that was a really good quality of life update. Don't forget updates at this point were every month. 2023 was the year of systems and Monkey Island as was 2022 following the release of the captaincy update. It's been a very long time since we've had a proper sandbox season and the game doesn't feel like it's added new activities for a while outside of Monkey Island and the Skull of Siren song. The other issue felt like the updates were being delivered in two parts. Captaincy and guilds are basically two halves of the same social systems. It was captaincy and then big captaincy. Season 9 and Sea for Seas were making the game more accessible for new players, and Season 8 and Season 11 were dive to PvP and then dive to PvE respectively. When you consider that six seasons worth of content, it's easy to feel like we're stuck in a bubble. But jumping into 2024, we have the upcoming showcase for Seasons 12, 13 and 14. And if rare is to be believed, we'll have four seasons this year, with the latter three being brand new things to do. The fact we have a showcase like 2022 shows rare is pretty confident in what they have coming for the game. Granted, we did have issues in 2022, but Guild is out now, so that shouldn't be an issue. Mike Chapman, when we had him last on the podcast, said they've basically done all the launch promises and systems to get Sea of Thieves in the place they want and now we're heading into completely new territory. We could get new world events, tall tales, new toys, and even new voyages. This is me huffing hopium, but I'm expecting massive things from this year. Both because we generally know all the seasons will be adding new things to do, we have PS5 players coming in with season 12, which should bring the game back into wider gaming media, and we'll have the story finally moving on, with so many different plot lines to look forward to. Oh, and Anti-Cheat is coming next week, and the GDK build should make the game perform better, well, as soon as all the bugs are ironed out. We could see the revival of Sea of Thieves as a heavy hitter here, as long as there are no delays, no massive cheating issues, and the PS5 launch goes smoothly. On a quick note, there are a bunch of pre-order bonuses for PS5 players, so have a look into that, and if you play the beta, you get an exclusive set of sales and an exclusive title. I'm really excited for that showcase since we'll have lots of stuff to look forward to. 
All Rare needs to do is then ditch seasons as a naming convention and then we're golden. Every season should feel fresh and feel like it pushes the game forward rather than building a foundation. I do think Sea of Thieves needed some foundational work, not as a core player, but in order to better prep the game for new players. And that just takes as much, if not more time and resources as making new stuff for the sandbox. What I'm saying is, if you're a new player or an old boomer like me, you should probably be hyped for what's coming for the game. It's taken a while, but it seems like all our feedback is being acted upon very, very soon. I don't want to get your hopes up, but I probably already have, so if I'm wrong, you can take it out on me. 